Hiya, Andy Lewis here again from Wildwood Training, Bushcraft and Survival. And uh, I thought I'd have a little bit of a, a chat today because um, a question keeps on coming up when I'm instructing people and teaching people outdoors. And it's probably exactly the same for lots of other uh, instructors who are involved in outdoor activities and definitely with lots of other survival instructors and bushcraft instructors. This question always seems to crop up. And people say, so how did you get into this then? And you're like, oh well, it's a, it's a long story. And I always feel that when I start talking to people about this, sometimes they switch off a little bit. Um, so maybe if I just put it down on here and people have access to it then um, on the internet and they can see this before they come on the course, maybe I won't get asked that question. Not that I don't like answering it, uh, it's just one of those questions that it becomes quite repetitive in the way that you answer it. So um, how did I get into bushcraft and survival? I was very very fortunate at a very young age to be um, introduced to the outdoors um, by my father and he took me out, my dad took me out. From the age of about nine or ten hill walking I can still remember the f one of the first hills that we walked that it was with um, you know some other dads and lads and uh, we went and walked up Kinder Scout and it's you know reason reasonable hill reasonable little sort of peak you know challenging for a sort of nine ten year old and um, I was never really great at sports in school never really fit and, and strong and athletic and some would argue that I'm still not but uh, we went out and uh, we're all you know it was a good walk to the to the little peak itself and then we're all walking up and um, it was well marked and I took off ahead and I absolutely loved it just loved the feeling of it loved the physical exertion of it um, loved the environment the weather wasn't particularly great but just didn't bother me at all and then when I reached the top I sort of turned around to uh, look at other members of the group and say isn't this great and there was nobody there and uh, I couldn't believe it I thought that I was being wound up at first and they all just sort of let me plow on ahead and stopped you know for a laugh but they hadn't and then as other members of the group sort of you know got up to the top they sort of stared at me in disbelief that I that I'd got up that quick and one of the uh, one of the other dads there, Gary, can still remember what he said. He said, my God, you're like a little mountain goat. And that was an incredibly important moment for me. Um, something which I've seen time and time again, you know, delivering outdoor activities and uh, taking kids on expeditions and, and being a secondary school teacher as I was teaching outdoor education for, you know, for many years. Um, outdoor experiences and moments like that, they they help people to establish their own persona and be the individuals that they need to be. It gives you self-esteem, it gives you confidence, it's just fantastic experiences and it was like that for me. Uh, so I still remember, you know, being Chris in the Mountain Goat and, and that just, um, yeah, it just filled me with this this pride and this, uh, this self-esteem and I wanted to do it more and more. So my dad and I just kept on going out and hill walking and then when I was in my teens, at some point, I got a copy of Lofty Wiseman's survival manual and I just thought, oh my God, you know, this is amazing. I, you know, I can be involved in the outdoors and I can also get to light fires and use sharp tools. And uh, yeah, that was it, you know. Every time me and my dad went out and we were out hill walking, we'd find a, a little patch of, uh, of woodland or something off to the side of the track or a little sort of, you know, secluded like sheepfold or little sort of uh, little enclosure in some rocks or something if we were up on a peak and we'd either light a fire and boil some water, do a little bit of wood prep, a little bit of carving or uh, using stoves, you know, camp stoves and put up shelters and, and uh, have bivvies and put tarps up and so on. And that just naturally progressed and, you know, went all over the UK um, doing that, going up and down hills. And then eventually that led to me and my dad, you know, when I was 19, going over to Nepal and trekking through the Himalayas and climbing some peaks out there, Gokyo Ri, Chola, Kalapatar, seeing Everest Base Camp. Just amazing experiences, which I still consider myself very lucky to have had. But, um, yeah, and then that led on to me being a secondary school teacher 
helicopter going overhead here. Search and rescue. <laughs> um, yeah, that led to me being a secondary school teacher and um, I was an outdoor education teacher and um, was leading the Duke of Edinburgh's award, bronze, silver and gold expeditions. Uh, managed to persuade the head teacher to get a, a, an indoor climbing wall put in the school. Yeah, I was really lucky. Loved going into work, you know, to do those activities, orienteering, NICAS, NNAS, all the rest of it. And then I was offered the opportunity to take over the alternative provision in the school for kids who struggled learning and, you know, um, they found a normal curriculum too challenging and, you know, they, they exhibited challenging behaviour and uh, they had ADHD, dyspraxia, kids on the autistic spectrum, all kinds of stuff. And um, I did forest school leader training and delivered that to them and delivered bushcraft activities. We went out hill walking. I ended up delivering the Duke of Edinburgh's award to them as well. And it was, it was just fantastic. It was brilliant. And unfortunately, certain changes in the value placed on those activities by Ofsted uh, altered the funding in the school for it it altered the amount of opportunities I could provide and it just became a little bit too difficult. Plus my, my wife uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer and she was a secondary school teacher as well but went through all the treatment for, um, for that. Um, chemotherapy, surgery, radiotherapy, all the drugs afterwards etc. And um, just had a real, both of us had a real realisation that life is too short and if you're not doing what you love, you're just wasting your time. So she came away from teaching and she started up a, a charity, Sam's Diamonds, which helps young women uh, through their cancer journey. Not just breast cancer, any cancer. Um, and I came away from teaching and uh, went to bushcraft and survival instruction full time and it's it's great. I just love it. I certainly didn't do it for the money, <laughs> but it's uh, it's brilliant. I just love being out here, especially on a day like today. It's a little bit cool. There's a bit of a breeze coming through. Um, it's quite clear today, so yeah, and it was clear last night. So the skies, you know, no cloud cover, so it gets a little bit cooler. But um, it's just glorious. It's just brilliant, and I'm really lucky as well as you know, working with members of the general public. I also do leader training and uh, deliver some. Um, fully accredited uh, qualifications. They're accredited by the Institute for Outdoor Learning, so my, my business and I am a member of, of the IOL. So yeah, that's, that's how I got into all this and I intend to do this for the rest of my life. And I regularly try to indoctrinate anybody I can, particularly my own children, <laughs> into these activities. Uh, yeah, I just love it. Um, so that's me, that's how I got into these activities. And I hope that you'll come and join me out in the woods, come and take part in one of the courses. And as I say, it's not so that I can just earn money off people's backs because you don't earn a great, you know, an amazing living doing this. You can earn a living if you work hard at it, but it's just about being out here and about giving people the opportunity to come out and experience this environment, you know, and learn these skills. I place tremendous value on the skills associated with survival, being able to plan properly for going outdoors, being responsible for yourself, keeping yourself safe, understanding how to protect yourself, how to make shelters in different environments, how to light fires, how to signal your location to people if you need to get rescued in lots of different ways, how to acquire food and water outdoors and make it safe for consumption, how to navigate, but also less practical things, just being outdoors and engaging with nature in a different way. Loads of people want to engage with nature, they're just not quite sure how to do it. So like they go on walks and sometimes it can feel a bit empty or they come out and they go camping, it doesn't quite live up to their expectations because they go on a typical sort of campsite for members of the general public where you can't have fires, you can't forage, you can't just, you know, build shelters. Um, and people want to do that, kids want to do that, you know, it's, it's a brilliant way of engaging and interacting with the natural world around you and it, it makes you want to learn about it, it makes you wonder, can I eat that plant, you know, can I drink that water, how could I, you know, get myself a meal out here, would I be able to take care of myself? And 
in those sorts of ways it kind of makes you engage with yourself as well and you you question yourself and you start to push your limitations and when you have successes it makes you happy about you know the level that you're at and you gain confidence real confidence confidence which is you know is engaged through which is uh, um, um, gain through experiential learning and engaging in something practically that can't be beaten it can't be taken away you can't fake that you know it's real and when you come out to an environment like this if you spend time with people you forge real relationships not relationships you know sort of over Facebook or Instagram or snapchat or whatever people are using these days you know Twitter or whatever you can have you know 300 friends on there but you've never actually met the majority of them face to face time spent with people outdoors is real and you bond in a way which you just don't get in any other activity in my experience you know so you do these different activities you build a shelter with people you light a fire you sit around it and you really talk you really engage and you get a group of people coming out here at the start of the day who don't know each other who've never met before and there's just something about being in an environment like this working together having to work as a team and or sitting around a fire in the evening it just makes you open up it makes you talk it makes you communicate and very typically on a course people who meet each other for the first time they keep in touch and they communicate with each other after courses and then they'll come back on courses in the future and pair up again because they enjoyed spending that time together it's it's great i just love it i just love these environments so um yeah that's how uh that's how i got into the outdoors and that's why i started wildwood training you know i moved away from teaching mainstream education to do this and uh it's been a real adventure another adventure so yeah so i hope that hasn't um hope that hasn't bored anybody too much and perhaps if i put this up on my website i won't get quite as many people asking so how did you get into this <laughs> but we'll see we'll see i'll st I still will get people um asking that question i'll still be happy to answer it but yeah that's uh that's it and the rest is history so if coming out and doing some bushcraft and survival activities even if you're completely new to it you've never done it before that you know that's great I love it when people who are new to these activities come out and try them for the first time because um, it's great you know the more people we can get out here doing this the more people we get valuing these sorts of environments and then the more value that people place on it then the more they're likely to take care of it so you know just by being out here we, we create people who have an attitude of conservation and preservation it's great anyway i'm going to stop talking to you and i'm going to go and have an explore and a walk around because on a day like today it's got to be done just go and have a wander so thanks for watching and i hope that i get the opportunity to see you on one of my courses